Are y'all glad to be in church tonight? I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in church tonight. I know you are, or you wouldn't be here. Amen. Uh, those those who are here, you're glad you're here, and I'm glad you're here tonight. Uh, this is session number nine on prayer and intercession, and I know that because Pastor Daniel told me that this is session number number nine. I kind of lost count. I, I'm actually. Uh, I have enjoyed this teaching, I, I guess, as much as I've enjoyed anything uh, that I've taught and preached in a while, uh, but I, I have so enjoyed that. And I pray that, uh, again, that your prayer life is changing daily, that you are beginning to enjoy it. You know, it's one thing you can, you know, we can decide to pray and we can pray, but, but God wants us to enjoy our prayer life. He wants to enjoy the time that we spend with him because basically that, that is what prayer is all about. And I was listening to Jensen Franklin the other day and, and, and he was talking about, he went back to the, to the book of Genesis when, when God was, talk, was walking uh, uh, in the garden in the cool of the day. I don't know anybody watched that, but but that um, Adam and Eve he he communed with them, you know, in the cool of the day, at a time of refreshing. You know, it's refreshing to spend time with the Lord, and if it's not refreshing, then you're probably not doing it the right way. Amen? If you don't enjoy spending time with the Lord, then, then we, probably, we probably need to check our motives for prayer. You know, we, we need to find out, well, just why am I here? Just to, uh, you know, plead with God and beg God. And, you know, how many of you know we don't have to beg him? How many of you know he's your father? In that what Matthew chapter uh, 6 verse 9 says, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, he is your Father. And he, just like you earthly fathers, like to spend time with your children. He loves it when you talk to him. He loves it when you, when you go into his presence or invite him into your presence your space to be in your presence. Uh, he's just waiting for us to talk to him. He's just waiting for us to commune with him. And, and I, I really like that, uh, uh, that, you know, that uh, take on him, him coming in the garden in the cool of the day and talking to Adam and Eve. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that cool? Have you experienced that in your prayer time? Have you experienced that refreshing time with the Lord where you knew he was there? Amen. Isn't that awesome? Just to know he's there. Well, we know he's there by faith, don't we? But isn't it good just to just to sense his presence? You know, I think that they, they could it says they could hear him in the garden. It, it, isn't it neat to be able to hear his voice? When you pray, and, and so uh, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed this. It has it has definitely improved my prayer life uh, uh, much greater than, than where where it had been. You know, I'll just put it that way. It's Im improved my prayer life. But going back to Matthew chapter six, verse nine, after this manner, therefore pray you, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Verse 13 is where I want to pick up tonight. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're only going to do 13 tonight. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you go over to James, and if you want to write this down, in James chapter 1, verse 12, 
It says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. How many of you know you're going to have temptation? And you're going to have temptation on a regular basis. But, but we're going to read on down to, to, to let you see that God is not your tempter. Okay, so, so, but this is blessed is the man that endures temptation. And what that means is does not give in when the enemy comes to tempt you. And, and, and you all know, and you all, all agree that he is, he is a tempter. He's evil. He wants to try to trip you up, make you fall. He wants to lead you into all kinds of, he wants to lead us into evil. Or for a Christian that he knows he really can't lead you into evil. You've made up your mind. You're not going back to that old lifestyle. He, he, he will just, you know, he will just try to lead you away from the good stuff that, that the, the Lord's doing in your life. He'll try to pull you away from church. He'll try to pull you away from uh, other believers. He'll, you know, he'll try to cause you to be so busy that, that you don't have time to pray. You don't have time for the Lord. That, and that's the way he does us Christians to try to, to keep us from being effective in the kingdom of God. That's, that's, what, that's where what he wants for believers is for us to, you know, it's okay to be a Christian as long as you're not being effective for the kingdom. That's how the enemy thinks. I mean, he doesn't want us, he doesn't want us to be a thriving church. He doesn't want us to be a church that's alive and on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. He does not want that. So he knows he's not going to tempt you because you've made up your mind. I'm not going back to that old way. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do drugs. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to sleep around if that, you know, if you, anybody had that problem, I mean, and people do. I, I mean, you know, we're, we've been saved from all kinds of sin. Well, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, ha had their own, and some people were just out there living it up, doing everything that was wrong. Amen? And, and he knows that you, that, that there are Christians who are not ever going to go back there, but he wants to keep us frustrated. He wants to keep us to where, you know, to, to where uh, being a Christian isn't fun anymore. I'm telling you, being a Christian should be the most fun life that you've ever had. And, and, and I could ask some of you, if you remember your old life, you'd know that being a Christian is much better than, than, than not being a Christian and living in the world. You know, I, I'm, uh, uh, but, but, but the enemy, the enemy is, he's a sly, uh, devious. I mean, I mean, he, 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 if he can't get you to, to commit sin, he will try to keep you from working in the kingdom of God Amen. through his temptation. And this says, blessed is the man that endures temptation. What does that mean? That you are tempted and you don't yield to it. Amen. Isn't that good? Don't, doesn't it, it makes me feel good when I know I've been tempted and I didn't yield. Does that not make you feel good? I mean, that makes you know that, that, that you know, the Lord's on your side and, and he's helping you through the temptations of the enemy. But then it says, uh, it, it says, I love this part, you shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to give them that love him. If you endure temptation, you're going to receive the crown of life that the Lord's promised. And then it says in verse 13, and this is the point I want to make from this scripture, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. How are you tempted? Next verse tells you. But every man is tempted when he, was, he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So God doesn't tempt you because he can't. Did you, did you read that? 
He can't tempt you with evil because he don't have any. There's no evil in heaven. You know, for those who believe that, that, the, that God makes people sick and kills people and, and, and all of that, he can't do that. You know, we, we just did thy kingdom come, thy will be, will be done a couple Wednesday nights ago. Thy kingdom come in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in earth. Guess what? God wants the same thing for us believers here on earth that's going on in heaven. Is there any sickness in heaven? So is it his will for you to be healed? It, it, does he put sickness on you? He can't. Why? There's not any in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as, is, as it is in heaven. So he can't tempt us with evil. He doesn't make us sick. He's not the author of sickness and disease. When, when that happens to a Christian, and it does not, not, I want you to hear me, just because a Christian gets sick does not mean they sinned. Don't judge people. Because when you get sick, everybody's going to wonder if you sinned. Because you judged somebody else when they got sick. Just because we live in an, we live in in an imperfect world, and 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 Satan is the god of this world, and that's where sickness and disease and temptation and sin. Uh, you know, you can't you can't say, well, I, I was tempted of the Lord and I sinned. No, you're not tempted by the Lord because He can't tempt you with evil. He, and he can't put sickness on you. He he doesn't put poverty on you. He he doesn't he doesn't uh, cause you to have accidents. He doesn't cause any of those things. Now now those things happen again because we live in an imperfect world. We but but you know. Uh, the, the, the world is going to be renovated one day, and it will not be imperfect anymore. Amen? The reason why is because Adam and Eve fell. You, you know why they did that? Because they did something they weren't supposed to do, and then they ran and hid from God. You know, don't you know that was a miserable thing? Aren't you glad that Jesus came and gave us the right to go into the throne room boldly and talk to our Father again like they used to talk to him in the garden in the cool of the day? You know, and, and then I'm so glad that I can talk to my Father anytime I want to. But every time I do, it's a refreshing time. Amen. So that this 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 uh, part of the prayer says, "And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil." If you are going to pray, you need protection. Okay, we are going to pray, aren't we, people? That's why we're here. That's what we've been doing for for nine weeks now. We've been talking about prayer and intercession, and and. and and, and as I said, I think it's revolutionized several people's lives or maybe just awakened your prayer life. May, and, and, and that would revolutionize your prayer life. Just awaken us to the fact that how important prayer is. Because if we're going to win in life, we're going to have to be people who pray. Amen. Prayer is one of the greatest weapons against the enemy and the power we have to pull down strongholds. We have, we, you know, the Bible says that we can pull down strongholds. Well, we do that through prayer and intercession. It, 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 is, it is one of the most powerful weapons that we have uh, uh, in, in the world and especially against our enemy. The enemy knows the prayers of the saints is his greatest enemy. And so that's the reason you get bombarded in your mind with every distraction imaginable. Anybody have that happen in the last nine weeks? 
You, you go to pray, and there is just every distraction imaginable. I mean, he, I mean, there's interruptions. There are all kinds of things that try to pull you away, you know, uh, maybe just a distraction to, you know, to do something like work in the house or, or go outside or, or, or Pick up your tele, your phone and, and look at Facebook. I'm telling you, there are two, there are so many distractions, and that's what, what the enemy does is he bombards our mind when we get ready to pray because he knows that if Christians begin to pray, he is going to lose ground and he can't win against us. He can't win against a praying husband and wife. He can't win against a, a, a praying church. He can't win when when mama starts to pray. I'm telling you, when, when, when a, a mother who knows the word, who knows the Lord, begins to pray, you may as well give up, give in, because because you're gonna you're gonna the enemy's gonna lose the battle, and you're gonna you're gonna have to get right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. I mean, and those prayers, aren't you glad that those prayers that that your righteous mom or dad or whoever in your life that was a, a mentor to you, even though they may be gone on, their prayers are still working on your behalf. Isn't that awesome? Do you know that your prayers that you pray here, they're going to continue working even though you may have already gone to be with the Lord? I'm telling you, prayer is a powerful, powerful thing, and that's why the enemy does everything he can to stop it. The enemy wants to keep us putting out brush fires. The Lord just gave this to me this morning. I didn't read this anywhere. I was just, I was just meditating. I got, a, got up a little early and Probably not early enough. I should have stayed up all night. But 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 anyway, um, but but the enemy wants to keep us putting out brush fires so we don't have time to pray against his schemes and his wiles and the destructive things that he wants to do to you and to your family, to this church, to this community, to every believer. He is out to destroy you. If he can keep us from praying, he is winning the war. But if he, but if we pray effectively, he can't stop us. Is that not awesome? He will keep you frustrated, beat down, beat up, so you're always too tired to pray. Read the word, go to church. So what do we do to combat that? You have an enemy that studies you so he can find ways to trip you up. Did you know that? He, he, he is a, a person of strategy. I, I mean, he, he, he doesn't, uh, you know, he's, he's like a, a general. I mean, I, I mean he, he, he is out to destroy you, so he, he studies everything about you. Guess what? Say, guess what? I'm under the blood of Jesus, and he can't see through that. He can't see through that. So how do we combat the enemy? By putting on the whole armor of God. It's not enough to know about the armor. If y'all, you folks that has Larry Lee's book, if you remember, he had a... Presbyterian preacher. I don't know his Presbyterian, but he had a minister come to him, and 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 uh, and, and Larry, you know, was he talked to him about, you know, how was he was depressed, and and this this preacher asking me said, uh, well, uh, do you know about the armor? And of course, Larry Lee was going to impress him because he, you know, he went to. Uh, uh, you know, seminary, and and he had three years of Greek, and and all this kind of stuff, and he was he was going to you know just impress him with what he knew about Ephesians chapter six, and 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 the man, you know, after he talked to him for a minute, he said, "I'm not asking you if you know about the armor," he said, "I'm asking, do you put the armor on?" You know, because we run around spiritually. Naked, and in the South we say naked. 
but we run around spiritually naked more than we have our spiritual clothes on. Because we get up, we get up in a mad rush and, and, and we don't pray and, and we don't put on the armor of God. Uh, you know, we've got to do that on a daily basis. We've got to pray daily. We've got to put the armor on on a daily basis. It don't take that long to do that. Because that's how we are going to protect ourselves from the enemy himself. It's not enough to know about the armor. You have to put it on daily. And how do you do that? With your mouth. By speaking the word of God over yourself and your family on a daily basis. And folks, we've got to, we've got to stop uh, just running out of the house and running to work and not equipping ourselves uh, for, and protecting ourselves from the enemy because he, he is lurking everywhere, trying to look. He's, try, he's looking at you to see if you ran out of your house naked. Naked. And if you did, guess what? You're going to be open target for him. And he's going to be able to, he's going to, be able to, to penetrate your, your thought life. He's going to be able to get into your head. You know, we were talking last week, uh, you know, about forgiveness. You know, if we don't put on the protection that we need for our head, guess what? He's going to start telling you all kinds of stuff. How many people can just give you a look and the enemy will say, they don't like you? That could be further from the truth. I mean, it may not be true at all. Amen. Before you leave your house, you always put on some clothes because it's illegal, number one. If you don't, right? You know, try it. No, don't try it. If you leave your house and you don't have any clothes on, somebody's going to report you and the police going to come and get you for indecent exposure. How many Christians are guilty of indecent exposure? But you know the thing, you're only exposing yourself to your enemy. And he would like nothing better, than, you know, than to, than to destroy your life. So we've got to start putting some clothes on and stop being spiritual streakers. <laughs> yes, they call him the streaker. Yeah, there goes that Christian. He's streaking out and... The enemy will spot you quickly if you're if you are naked. It's time to put on the whole armor of God. So we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6. This is so important if you're going to be an intercessor. It's so important if you are going to uh, have an effective prayer life and that you protect yourself from the enemy because we don't need intercessors uh, falling by the wayside. We need intercessors that are praying every day powerfully, not only for yourself, but for your family, for your church, for your community, because I don't know about you. I want every one of my kids to be with me in heaven. I want every one of my grandkids to be with me in heaven. I, and I want my, my kids to be blessed, and I want my grandchildren to be blessed, and I want my great-grandchildren to be blessed. I don't want them to live uh, a life of sin. I don't want them to live a life of uh, pain and sickness and disease. I, I, don't want, you know, I don't want them to live a, a life separate from the Lord, and I want to know that I know that I know that one day they're going to be with me in heaven. Amen? And it's my responsibility to pray for them. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. All of you have heard many messages 
on this particular passage of Scripture, but it's so important in prayer if you're going to be an effective prayer warrior. In verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We need the power of God working in us daily. And it comes from the Lord and by spending time with him. Amen? He said, Jesus said to the disciples, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his, his might. You are not operating in your own ability. You are not operating in your own strength. You are not operating in your own might. You're supposed to be operating in the strength of Almighty God. And, and I'm telling you what... There is no weakness in him. He is, he is, uh, uh, he, he's just as, uh, none of his strength has been depleted by anything that's going on in the world. He's just as powerful today as he has, ever has been when he created the universe. He's just as powerful today and he wants you to walk in his strength not your own, but he wants you to walk in his strength. And how you do that is by spending time with him in prayer, spending time with him, you know, just talking to him, just loving on him and letting him love on you. He will strengthen you on the inside. Amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Put on the whole armor of God. Have you ever seen so many Christians fainting? I mean, just fainting. And, and uh, I, I, I think it was, was again, was um, uh, Jensen Franklin talking about, you know, all the people who have not come back to church yet. Because they have, they have fainted spiritually. And one of the reasons why they fainted is because they, they played into the hand of the enemy by not keeping themselves covered and keeping the armor of God on their life. So put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because you don't know at what unguarded point the enemy may attack. We don't know, do we? Anybody ever been surprised? I mean, just something just surprising happened. We all have. You know, I was totally surprised the day my wife died in the parking lot of a restaurant. It took me by total surprise. And for about a year and a half, I, I, I just, I, you know, I was just kind of in a, in a blur, in a daze. Even though I kept serving the Lord, I kept going to church for a year. After that, I pastored for a year after she died. And, and but, but I'm telling you, I was just blindsided by the enemy. Could I have changed that? Possibly, Yes. That's why it's so important that we pray over our day, that we get up and pray, and we bind the attacks of the enemy, and we put on the armor of God so that we can be protected against what he's trying, what, what, what he intends to do to you. He has intentions, but thank God his intentions are better, and, and he's already defeated the devil 2,000 years ago. Amen? You don't know when the attack will come, but you can be ready for it. You know, if you're ready for the attack, it's not going to affect you. And that really makes the enemy mad. So he, he tries to find something, something else. But if you continue to keep yourself covered in the blood and, and the armor of God on, then guess what? He's not going to catch you napping. He's not going to catch you streaking with, without your armor on, without, without your spiritual clothes on. If you're ready, he won't get you off guard, and you will win that battle every 
time. Amen? I love to win. How about you? I am a winner. The Bible tells us we are winners. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph. Greater is he that is on the inside of me than he that's in the world. He's the greater one. We are supposed to win every battle. Amen? I'm getting there. How about you? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, against the strategy, uh, 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 you know, get against the, the things that the enemy has planned out for, for you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of this darkness, uh, uh, the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I don't care what any human person does to you. You are not wrestling with that person. And when you start wrestling with people, the enemy is winning the battle and he's eating your lunch. Amen? We've got to stop fighting each other. I, I, I guess I can't stress that enough in church because church people sometimes fight more than the world does. I don't intend on having to fight with anybody in here. I made up my mind. I'm not fighting with my brothers and sisters. I'm going to fight the devil. Amen? And kick him out. I'm not, I'm not going to fight with, with any person. It's not going to do you any good. You're not going to win by doing that because your battle is not with people. It's with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And you can only fight the enemy with your spiritual armor and your spiritual weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to what? To the pulling down of strongholds of the enemy. And I don't know about you, but I've been looking at some strongholds that I'm tired of looking at. And the Bible says that I have the ability and the power and the weapons to pull those strongholds down in prayer. So why am I not praying? You can preach that to yourself because I just preached it to myself. Why are we not praying then? We've got to wake up, people, and realize that we are equipped to win the battles of life. Amen? That you may be able to stand. That you may be able to stand. You know, they put those spikes on their, on their sandals. Soldiers put those spikes on their sandals that had, uh, had spikes that dug into the ground so, so that when, when they were fighting, you know, the enemy couldn't knock them over, you know, and they could, and they could stand uh, sure-footed. God wants you to be planted, rooted, and grounded in the Word. He doesn't want you to be knocked over with every you know, every little wind, you know, every little storm. He doesn't want it to devastate you. He doesn't want you to, I'm telling you, God wants us to win every battle that we have. Every battle. Because he, you are a winner. So we can stand against the wiles of the devil, his schemes. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, against the organized forces of evil power. The Lord's Prayer is our organized force against the enemy. Come on. It's our organized force. It's an organized prayer. It's our organized force against the enemy. And I'm telling you, the, the more I pray the Lord's Prayer, the, 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 and the more I confess the word, the, you know, 
it's just like a spiritual giant is awakening on the inside. And that's what the Lord wants is he wants a spiritual giant, that spiritual giant that you're supposed to be to awaken on the inside. You know, we, we think of David and, and him killing the giant, well, you know, and then cutting his head off. Little David, you know, we sing the song, Little David. And according to the rest of his brothers, he was a little in statue. But I'm telling you what, dynamite comes in small packages. And if you got the power of the Lord on the inside of you, then I'm telling you, you have the ability to, to defeat the devil just like David did. When he defeated the giant. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand. In the evil day. Are we in an evil day? I'm telling you. I've, I, I've never seen. You know the enemy fighting people. So much fighting families. But I, I, you know. I, I see that on a regular basis. Dealing with with families who's, who've lost loved ones and, and realize that, you know, I, I, I mean, people come into the, you know, in to make arrangements and they're fighting each other. I'm like, what is going on here? It is the devil. Because we won't forgive what they did to us 10 years ago. Come on. That's why some people don't go to church because they won't forgive somebody who's going to church there. The, the stupidest statement I think I have, I, I think I have ever heard people say is I'm not going to church with, I'm not going to church there because there's a bunch of hypocrites going to church there. You know, I, I've seen people post, well, you go to Walmart and shop with them. You know? <laughs> I'd rather be in church any day as being Walmart. <laughs> I definitely would rather be in church, you know, as to as to go to Walmart any time. And you see all kinds of stuff. They go out into the world, and they do all kinds of worldly stuff and go all kinds of worldly places, and then they won't come to church with somebody they think is a hypocrite. And they may not be the hypocrite. It may be that person that thinks that that person is a hypocrite that is the hypocrite. Did that make sense? Did that come out right? <laughs> you know, it, I'm telling you. I, I, I was thinking about I was thinking about putting something on Facebook about about people who 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 you know are are, are you're, uh, they're swearing off the of church I guess and they're making all these negative statements about you know ab about preachers and about leadership and about churches this and churches that and 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 and, and the world's better I want to tell you the world will never be better than where I go to church. Come on. Never. And I was like, and, and, and people are, are bashing people and talking about people and, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And I thought, I thought, well, you know, you are doing the same thing that you are accusing Christians of doing. I, the exact same thing. You're, you're doing it. I said, you know, so who is really the accuser? Who knows? You know, well, we know the devil is the accuser, and he's using people to accuse. But, you know, they're saying, you know, you're accusing of this, and you're accusing of that. And I, I'm like, who, who ends up being the accuser? Everybody's accusing everybody. Sorry. Church, don't get involved on that. D you know, pray before you before you respond to somebody's text on Facebook, because I did the other day, and then it ended up, and they wanted to argue. Well, I'm not arguing. I just quit the conversation, said, Lord, I knew better than to do that anyway. Forgive me. I, I, I kind of took my helmet of salvation off, <laughs> you know? You know, when you get mad, you, you'll do that. You, you'll lay aside those things just so you can... So you can tell them what you think and then go pick it back up. It don't work that way. But anyway. And having done all to stand, stand therefore intending to conquer. I like that. Having done all to stand. What does that mean? Having done all the crisis demands to stand. Have you ever been in a crisis? 
what does this tell you to do? Stand. Stand. Having done all to stand, stand. I, I don't see any exceptions in that, do you? I, I, I don't see where we can do anything but if we want to do what God wants us to do. Having done all to stand, stand. Don't quit. Don't sit down. Don't take a break. Don't take a nap. I'm not talking about you sleeping at night. A spiritual I'm in a nap from, you know, escape, escaping from, you know, from, from the battle. No, it says, having done all to stand, stand therefore and do what? Having your loins girt about with truth. I'm telling you, we cannot be successful prayer warriors unless we know this book. We've got to know this word. And I was thinking about this today, and I was thinking about years ago when I in, in the Baptist church, and, and I gave my life to the Lord when I was in the Baptist church. But, but, but anyway, years ago in the Baptist church growing up, when we had Sunday school, we had memory verses. Every, every week we were supposed to memorize memory verses. And I'm telling you, we, we, we've lost some ground by not teaching our kids to memorize Scripture. Because, I mean, how else do you think that I know Scripture? You know Scripture. We've got to get back to memorizing the Word of God because nobody's going to carry this book with them 24-7. You can't. But you've got to have the Word of God on the inside. How are you going to have your loins gird about with truth if you don't know the truth? We've got to know the truth, people, and we've got to start speaking the truth out of our... That's how we put on the armor of God is with our mouth, speaking it, saying, Lord, I take the shield of faith. Amen. We've got to know the word of God. And you say, well, I know some word and I can quote some word. Well, we all can do that. But I'm telling you what, we need to get in the book and get some more word. To strengthen our, our spirit man on the inside so that when the enemy comes, we don't give him an inch. You're not going to do that to me. You're not going to take my children. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to do anything to my family. You're not going to destroy my church. You're not going to destroy this community. You know, we all have learned to speak, uh, to stand when the storm, when tornadoes come, and we've learned to stand. You know, we, we, we've learned to stand probably because uh, we've experienced some tragedy in that area. You know, some people, I think, do it because of fear, but, but we've got to stand in faith and speak to the storms, not just the physical storms that are coming our way, but the storms of life that the enemy is trying to destroy us. We've got to have our loins gird about with truth. We've got to, have, we, we've got to do that. We've got to have truth. And, and, and most of these, most of these um, uh, parts of the armor is talking about the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And having your loins girt about with truth. Keep the armor in, uh, the, the, uh, you know, that part of the, of the armor keeps your belt of truth in place. It keeps the armor in place and it supports the sword. You must know who you are in God and who God is in you. You got to know. You got to know. You know. You've got to know in your knower on the inside. You, you, you've just, you know, have you ever got to the point that you thought you knew something, but you, but then it, the Lord just kind of dropped it in your spirit and you knew. 
you knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know that I know that I know. You know, I love the scripture. I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that, which I've committed unto him against that day. I know in whom I have believed. I know that my God is God. And beside him, there is no other. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will deliver. He will set us free. Amen. So you gird your loins with truth by reaffirming the truth about yourself and about God and by acting upon that truth instead of upon your emotions. People, we've got to get out of this emotional, you know, reacting, reacting in, in our out of emotions. And we've got to bring that part uh, of, of our, our life in line with the word of God. Amen. And having, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Who is he? Jehovah. What? Sid Canoe. What does that mean? He's my righteousness. He is my, he, he causes me to be in right standing because of the blood of Jesus. And the breastplate of righteousness, which guards your heart. I, I, I've been, I've been, I've been making this confession uh, in part of my prayer. Um, there's a song that I think we, I think we sang it here. He brings restoration. He brings restoration. And, and, and this is what I've been doing. Make it, make it a, a personal thing for you. Uh, you know, if you're experiencing any kind of pain or, or anything going on in your body. And, and I just started saying, you bring restoration. You bring restoration. You bring restoration to my soul. He brings restoration. You bring restoration. You bring restoration to my ears. And I just go through the body. To my ears, to my teeth, to my mouth. To, to my heart, my physical heart, you bring restoration. And I'm, I'm believing God for, for restoring things that the enemy has taken away. Amen? Amen? I was thinking about that because... You know, you know, because because as you get older, you you, you experience and, and sometimes uh, medicines and whatever you know, you experience some decay in your teeth. And I've been praying, Lord, bring restoration in my mouth, bring restoration to my teeth. Bring, I mean, He's the God that restores. He's the God that brings restoration to our life. Yes. Amen. We need to start. I, I, when, when we're praying, we need, we need to be praying and we need to be confessing the word Amen. instead of letting our emotions rule and reign in our lives. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. What's the gospel? <coughs> the word. The word of God. Good news. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Again, that firm-footedness. Lord, keep me from slipping. Lord, put my feet on the solid rock. I'm standing, you know that song we sing, I'm standing on the solid rock. A firm foundation, a sure foundation, amen? Above all, taking the shield of faith. Ephesians 2, 8 says that faith is a gift. Romans 10, 17 says what? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Romans 12, 3, I believe it is. Say God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench some of the darts of the wicked. 
every once in a while? No, it says that we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then take the helmet of salvation. Protect your mind. How? With the word of God. By confessing the word. By confessing the word. And, and covering your mind with, with the word of God. And pleading the blood of Jesus over your mind. I'm telling you, I, I, you know... I have never seen such, and you see it, you see it in, um, you see it on billboards now. You see it everywhere you go. All, all kinds of just perverseness going on. The enemy is trying, is trying to destroy our children, even in school. From you know, and 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 some of you may like it. And some of you out there listening may think that I'm that I'm an old fogey or whatever. But I, I absolutely hate TikTok and anything that 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 the enemy can use to to get my ki my grandkids into uh into trouble because that's what he does that's that's how he does it you know if we don't put it in it ain't going to come out we it, it's got to come in through 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 our our mind and we've got to put on the helmet of salvation and protect our head because let me tell you, when the enemy gets in your head, I, I mean, you're in you're in for for some trouble. You know, in, in the natural, if if something happens to your brain, you you are in serious trouble. Brain injuries are the worst kind of injuries. Well, spiritually, you cannot afford not to protect your head. Amen. Because that's where the battle is. You know, Joyce Meyer wrote a book. You probably have read it, Battlefield of the Mind. I mean, I mean, he, he works overtime to try to shoot thoughts through your head, and you have to cast those thoughts down. Cast those thoughts down. Every thought and every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, if we would put on our helmet every day, we we would be protected from those those missiles or those darts that the enemy is trying to throw at us on a regular basis. And the sword of the spirit, you know, I was talking about memory verses a while ago, and, and I, I don't know, I probably don't know any, and, and I'm going to say denomination. People would argue with me on this. But I don't know any denomination or church that 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 is more effective in in getting their kids to learn scripture than the Church of Christ. I mean, because they have they have word drills, and anybody that's ever been affiliated with the Church of Christ knows that I'm telling the truth. I mean, I mean they have they they have uh, Bible drills. They I mean they they do stuff just to get them to to learn scripture and, and commit that scripture to memory. I'm telling you people, we have got to know the word. And if you're going to be an effective prayer warrior, you've got to know the word of God. And we've got to stop thinking of this idea, well, I know enough. Come on. I don't know a drop in the bucket. A very, a very minuscule uh, amount of the word do I have committed to memory. You know, how are you going to get a rhema word if you don't read the written word? Amen? The written word is what? The logos? And, and the spoken word is rhema? How are you going to get a rhema if you don't read the logos? Come on. If you're getting words somewhere for that that's not, doesn't line up with this book, then, then they're not coming from God. Amen? And you're going to recognize that if you know the word. 
I mean, and, and, and I love something Ken Copeland said years ago. He said, one word from God can change your life. That's why we need to pray for Pastor Benny to be and the leadership of this church and the body of this church because we all work together as one to, to help each other. Amen. Amen? That God would, that the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and, and, and uh, 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 prophetic words would come forth from, from, from uh, our leadership to us. Because one word from God can change your life forever. One word from God can, can, can cause you to walk out of sickness and disease into life and health and peace and joy. I'm telling you, we need to hear hear a word from the Lord and we're not going to hear a word unless we know the word we won't know if it's from the Lord or not if we don't know the book because I'm telling you the, the enemy is out there telling people things but it's not from the Lord amen and the sword of the spirit we need to we need to go to sword practice. <laughs> and we need to stop just kind of, you know, hitting the air, fighting in the air, you know. <laughs> we need to learn to stab at that enemy right in the heart. Amen? We need to learn to kill him, <laughs> you know. Cut his head off. Amen. So we are, we're going to have to go to sword practice. We, 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 we need to start memorizing scripture again. I would just admonish you and me to, you know, to start making a point to memorize some, you know, some scripture during the week, every week. Because it takes me several days of saying it over and over and over again to get it on the inside. But that's what we need to do. Isn't that what Joshua 1.8 says? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou shalt meditate therein every once in a while. That thou shalt meditate therein day and night, night and day, day and night. We need to meditate the word. This book of the law, this book of the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Then and thou will make thy way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to have good success. He also told Joshua, every place that the sole of your foot shall tre tread or where you walk, he said, I will give it to you. Amen. Amen. This is our land. This is our city. This city doesn't belong to the Lord. I mean, to the devil. It belongs to the Lord. But let's stop giving it to the enemy by not praying. That's how we, we just give it over to him. This time, this time we took some ground back that we've lost. And I, don't, I, I, I believe that in two years we've lost some ground. Guess what? God's not the author of COVID. He don't have COVID. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He don't have COVID. God doesn't have COVID. It's not in heaven, so it shouldn't be in us. Amen? Amen? And we've, we've seen loved ones taken out by COVID. It was a diabolical uh, tool of the enemy to try to destroy the church and the body of Christ. I believe that with all of my heart. Now we're going to have to stand. Having done all to stand, we're going to have to stand our ground and take back what the enemy has stolen in prayer. That's why this, this prayer time is so important so very important amen well praise the lord I, I know pastor benny will be back i don't know if he wants me to continue this next wednesday but if he does i'll uh, I'll, I'll do whatever he and the lord says for me to do otherwise uh, i i will be glad for him to be home and 
looking forward to hearing a refreshing word from him, how he and Pastor Bonnie have been refreshed while they've been on their trip. Amen. I've only, I hadn't bothered him. I only texted him, I think, one time, and it was just to say, hey, miss you guys, or something like that. It wasn't like, well, I need something, Pastor. You know, I've tried tried to leave them alone, and, and I, try, I, I try not to bother them, bother them too much anyway, and pr- I learned to pray for myself. You know, sometimes we, we the body of Christ in, in a local body church, we can wear a preacher out. We can wear our pastors out, and, and we need to stop doing that. We need to learn from what they're preaching and learn to stand, having done all to stand, stand yourself. Stand on faith yourself. Stand on the word yourself. Speak to that mountain and tell it to be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And don't doubt in your heart, but believe that those things which you say out your mouth shall come to pass. And what's going to happen? It will come to pass. It will come to pass. You can do it. It's not just for the preacher. It's for everybody sitting in the pew. So every born-again believer has the power of God on the inside. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think we're offline, aren't we, Pastor Daniel, or we're not? Uh Uh-oh. Well, I have 8, 12 folks out there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. And um, we're praying for you guys. And we're, at, we're actually praying that one day we'll get to see you here, aren't we? Yes. We'd love to see you all here, everyone that can come. We would love to see you. Come out and join us on Sunday morning. That would be, that would be absolutely awesome and incredible. I've been, to, for you to come and say, I've been watching on Facebook. Here I am. Amen. We, we give you that open invitation to come on Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. God is good. Who wants to pray the benediction? Who wants to pray? Don't everybody jump at one time. Somebody volunteer. Brother Butch, would you say the closing prayer, please?